Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about what goes on inside your brain during times of market uncertainty and the things that you can do to safely and comfortably navigate those times to come out the other side with your financial goals still intact. Welcome to Wisdom and Wealth, where we talk about the human side of money. Join us as we dive beyond the numbers, unpacking the psychology of money to equip you with the tools you need to be wise in wealth. Welcome back to Wisdom and Wealth. I'm Brendan Frazier, Chief Behavioral Officer at RFG Advisory, and let's start by talking about the brain. We have two parts to the brain, and the brain's wired first and foremost for survival. We have one part of the brain that's there. It's a more of the emotional, reactive, instinctive part of the brain. We have another part of the brain that's designed for logical reasoning. It's designed for creativity and compassion. That's where we want to do most of our critical thinking. Now, anytime that our brain perceives a threat of some sort, of some kind, it activates this fear part of the brain, the one that's designed for survival, the one that makes emotional decisions. And that works out well when you're trying to survive in the wild and you've got animals coming around, you've got spiders and snakes that you need to avoid in order to continue living. That part of the brain works well for survival, but it's not the part of the brain that we want to make conscious, deliberate decisions with. It worked well for our ancestors, but that operating system in our brain doesn't work so well when it comes to making investment decisions. We don't want to make short-sighted emotional decisions. We want to make cool-headed, deliberate decisions. Think about the last time that you turned on the TV and you saw the headline that read, global markets plummet due to fear of recession. Or you log in, you 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 pull up your computer, log into a website, for the news and one of the headlines says market on the verge of plummeting worst period all year biggest drop of the year or maybe you pull up your accounts you log into your account and you look and you can see that your accounts down and you've lost a certain amount of money anytime you're in that scenario your brains again is wired for survival it perceives a threat you're not in the logical cool-headed decision part making part of the brain you're in the part of the brain that's wired for survival And so everything in you says, in order to survive this, to preserve my money and to preserve the things that I want to do with my money, I need to sell or I need to do something. It doesn't feel good to just sit here. Now, here's the problem with that, is that what we know about successful investing over a long period of time is that it's more about time in the market than trying to time the market. That selling out disrupts the power of compounding and typically... That's not the path to get the best investment returns over time. Here's an example of three different investors with three different philosophies to try to prove this point. They're investing from 1900 to 2019. Yes, they lived for 119 years, but that's not the point. And they have three different approaches. So you've got Sue. Her approach is to invest a dollar per month every single month for the entire time period, no matter what happens. Then you got Jim. Jim's approach is to invest a dollar per month. He's gonna stop investing right before a recession, sell everything out, and then as soon as the recession's over, start putting in $1 every month again until another recession comes. And then you've got Tom. Tom's philosophy is to invest a dollar per month, but he's gonna stop investing six months prior to a recession. By the way, Jim and Tom apparently have a crystal ball, so they know exactly when this is coming. Tom says, I'm going to stop investing right six months before the recession comes on. I'm going to sell everything that I have. And then six months after it ends, six months after the recession, I'm going to start investing $1 a month again. Here's what this looks like at the end of that 119 years that they get to live. Sue ends up at the end of that time period with $435,000. Jim ends up with $257,000. And Tom... Tom ends up with $234,000. Again, time in the market, not timing the market. Sue's approach was, I'm not gonna try to time the dips and the ups and downs. I'm just gonna stay consistent and stay invested. Because here's what we know about long-term investing. If you you can look at a chart of the S&P 500 or the market over any time period, and if you look at it, historically, it's always trended up and to the left. In fact, Napoleon's definition of a military genius is the person who's able to do the average thing in times when everything around them is going crazy. It just so happens that's pretty much the definition of a successful investor. It's the person who's able to do the average thing, the consistent thing, in times when everything around them feels like it's falling apart, when everything is going crazy. 
The reality of the matter is this. The behavior that you display, the decisions that you make in times of uncertainty and market volatility will almost certainly have a greater impact on your lifetime returns and your accumulation of wealth than almost anything else. But hopefully by now you've seen the problem. We know that time in the market is more important than timing the market. Logic shows that over time, the market's gonna trend up and to the left, that no dip has been permanent, that if you can just stay invested, that's your best chance to maximize your lifetime returns. But here's the thing. Logic is no match for emotion. And if the markets are plummeting or the headlines say that the markets are plummeting and your account's down, you're gonna be in the survival, the emotional part of your brain and logic doesn't always do the trick. It's just like why when you get on an airplane, you can know that 99.9% .9 of the time you're not gonna crash, but as soon as you hit the first bump and you experience turbulence and you jump out of your, you come out of your seat, you can't help the fact that you still feel that in your stomach, despite the fact that in your mind, you know that everything's gonna be okay. So what do we do in terms of deciding how to make these investment decisions? If we're in the emotional part of the brain, what can we do to get to the logical part to make smart, deliberate, intentional decisions? There's a number of things you can do. First and foremost, turn off the news. Because the reality is as soon as you see that headline, it lights up that part of the brain. Or try not to check your accounts as often as you do, especially if you have a financial advisor that you work with who's monitoring and tracking that for you. All it's gonna do is just add on more and more fear, more and more uncertainty when you see these headlines and you look at your account. Second thing you can do is take a minute to zoom out. When we're in this fear place in our mind, we have a tendency to zoom in and just focus solely on where we're at and try to survive in the moment, but zoom back out and remind yourself, ask yourself, what was this money invested for? What was the purpose of this? Why am I investing this money? Maybe it's because you, had the, you wanna be able to retire in a few years. Maybe it's because you need to be able to live off of your retirement savings and that's part of the way that you're gonna beat inflation to do it. Maybe it's because you want to be able to fund your kids or your grandkids education. Maybe it's so that you can take fun trips and vacations with your family. It could be any number of things, but go back and remind yourself, why did we invest this the way that we did? When you sit there and look at it, when you go back to building that portfolio, when the portfolio was built, it was built in a cool headed, logical state. And it was built and designed to maximize the likelihood of you being able to accomplish that goal. When the portfolio was built, it took into account past corrections, it took into account future corrections, all those things are factored in. The way that you're invested was there to maximize the likelihood of accomplishing your goals. And so before you decide to make any decisions, before you decide to, to sell out completely or partially, think about this. If we know that the markets go up and to the left. They tend to go up over time and time in the market is better than timing the market. Then if your decision is to not stay in, it's probably more than likely gonna result in it taking longer to get to where you want to go. It's gonna take longer to accomplish your goals. So take a minute, zoom out, remind yourself, why am I doing this? If at this point, you're still thinking, I I'm still worried, I'm still concerned, I'm not sold, and you need, feel like you need to do something, well, then we need to do a quick check to separate the emotion from the decision. We don't want the emotion completely driving the decision. There's a few things we can do to separate the emotion from the actual action of deciding what to do to help hopefully lead to the best decision possible for you. One of those things is to take a minute and go and research past market declines. Go look and see what have declines looked like in the past? What happened in the last recession? What happened the last 10 times the market dropped? Did it come back? When did it bounce back? How long did it take? It'll help you make a better, more informed decision. Another thing you can do, not many people like this because it's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's powerful. And that is, you already have a number of reasons why you want to sell, why you want to get out. You could probably list those off without, without any problem. But just pause for a second. Come up with three reasons why you wouldn't sell, why you should stay invested. Make the case on the other side. 
Maybe you decide when you do that that you actually do want to stay invested. Maybe you don't, but at least create some space between the, what you're feeling and the action that you want to take. Another thing, talk to your advisor. Figure out, is there a way that we can leverage this down market as an opportunity for the portfolio? Is there an opportunity to rebalance and get our, our mix back in line? Is there an opportunity to tax loss harvest? Is there an opportunity to look at Roth IRA conversions? All things that can benefit from the market being down. It still gives you something to do that's actually an opportunity to put you in a better situation moving forward. Lastly, probably most importantly, if you're still at this point thinking, I think I've just got to do this, I've got to get out, I've got to put an end to this, I'll feel so much better, do one last thing. Take a minute and look at or evaluate the implications of that decision. Here's what I mean. If you're somebody who's looking to retire in a few years, you're on the verge of retirement, map it out and say, if I were to actually get out, what would that do to my retirement timeline? Would it extend it? Would it mean that I need to work even longer or that I need to save more to make it happen? Or if you're retired already, map it out and say, if I were to do this, how does that impact my lifestyle moving forward? Can I still spend the way that I've been spending or... Does it mean that I need to make spending cuts and adjustments and start asking yourself if I do, if I need to make cuts and adjustments, where is that going to come from? Maybe you're sitting there going, I've got two, I've got multiple things that I want to do uh, that I need these investments for. I need, I want to retire one day, but I also want to pay for my kids' education, map out the implications and say, if I pull the trigger on this, can I still do both of those things or does it sacrifice one or the other? The better information you have, the better decision you can make, create space between your, the, the emotion that you're feeling and the action that you wanna take. Remember, it's the decisions that you make in times of uncertainty, it's the way you behave in times of market volatility that will have a massive impact on your overall lifetime returns and thus your financial success. As always, if you have any questions, if you want to talk to somebody about any of this, reach out to your advisor, let them know. Again, I'm Brendan Frazier. Until next time, stay wise and well.